What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always Headphones Neil bringing you this week's recap along with last week's recap of stuff I've been watching, uh, game I've been playing and have ultimately finished and all of that good stuff. Um, you may have noticed that there was not an episode last week but my monthly Knott's Berry Farm update um, was put out so um, definitely check that out. It's up on the podcast and uh, YouTube feeds for um, your hopeful enjoyment. But with that being said, I wanted to get through this particular mostly, or I, the first half is going to be Marvel related and the rest of it is just miscellaneous reviews. Um, but I got a lot of stuff to catch up on. So to start it off, um, last week or about two weeks ago, I was browsing around reading articles online and I came across an article that said that the animated show the Avengers Earth, Earth's Mightiest Heroes actually um, presented the Scroll secret invasion story arc better than what the recent TV show did. So I got to thinking that I would watch that show and see if it was actually better or worse about the same. See how they did things differently to see how it generally held up. And I want to say that if you are a fan of the Scroll story arc, then definitely check it out. It is available for streaming on Disney+. Plus. Um, the arc covers a few different episodes, so it starts in Season 1, Episode 15, 459 with the introduction of the Scrolls. Then you go into, the, um, into Season 2, Episode 4, Welcome to the Kree Empire. Then Season 2, Episode 7, Who Do You Trust? Season 2, Episode 11, Infiltration. Uh, season 2, Episode 12, Secret Invasion. And then finally, Season 12, Episode 25, Live, Cree, or Die. So this does um, mix a little bit between the Cree and the Skrulls. But when you're watching the episodes, you'll see a lot of similarities to what is covered in the Secret Invasion story arc and how the animated series actually provides a more complete picture in these episodes. And even if you want to say even in the six episodes that are there, better than what Se the live action Secret Invasion did. So you will we'll see how Secret Invasion, the TV, the live action version, actually is incomplete to the point where it feels like they're relying on the current phase um, or the whole, you know, universe setup for um, the MCU quite a bit. But the TV show doesn't really solve anything it actually feels like it makes things worse because um at least in the animated version they int include the avengers um the notable ones are hulk thor and iron man and then there's a few others as well and um you do have uh, nick fury and maria hill in there so the only thing that the live action version did was keep um the scrolls nick fury and maria hill but didn't include the avengers didn't resolve anything with the invasion didn't actually have the invasion so it's one of those things where the TV show, the live action version, could have done, um, could have basically made the live action version of the animated version, just consolidated into a mini series, and um, they would be good to go. Because in general, the live action stuff le lately has been uh, very good, um, even overall since phase one. But this just felt like an incomplete series, so it's kind of hard to justify it um, until we get the whole phase complete, you know, especially with the uh, multiverse, whatever Nick Fury was doing up at Saber, and just the general universe stuff. So with that being said, I would actually prefer, or I would actually recommend the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes as far as this particular story arc and the episodes I listed. So that way um, you get a better uh, presentation of it, better story and all of that. The animation kind of sucks. I didn't really like that. Um, the audio was fine, I guess. I didn't like the introduction to the show, but that's not related to the content. So for me, if you can get over the animation, then you will enjoy the um, actual content and the story that much more in the animated form versus the live action form. 
Um, with that being said, I also had a chance to watch Guardians of the Galaxy um, Volume 3. It's now available for streaming also on Disney+. Plus. So I thought that, you know what, I watched the first two, I think only on streaming, so I'll give this one a watch as well. And overall, I thought it was okay. It dealt a lot with the origin story for Rock and Raccoon, which was fine. But in this case, I was actually able to get behind Drax a lot more, especially with the scene with the orphan children, um, the whole scene with um, the monkey sounds not being an actual monkey. Um, Mantis calling him stupid and then making him forget, but then that whole thing, that whole conversation is everything Drax was in in this case really sold me on it, so I enjoyed that a lot more than the overall story. Uh, not to say that the Rocket Raccoon story arc was bad, but I did like the payoff by the end that they ultimately made him the captain of the ship and uh, Peter went home, or Peter Quill went home to live with his grandparents, so or his granddad, I guess. So in general for me, I thought it was an okay film. Um, I can see why people like it, liked it and it was good. Um, if Guardians of the Galaxy is your thing, then definitely it's a good film. For me, it's not, um, it didn't really resonate for me to begin with. The movies are fine, so I'm not saying that they're bad, but um, most of the downside is just that it's not my cup of tea, so that's why I couldn't really get behind it. In this case, the story was kind of slow where I do prefer the first two stories a lot more um so i would probably say i would probably recommend um volume one and two over this one so that's all i got to say about that um next up uh, amc released the first 10 minutes of the walking dead daryl dixon so his little mini series show is going to release in september um so i guess they're doing what i think they did for the Walking Dead main show with Rick Grimes where I think before The Walking Dead aired officially they released like the first like five or ten minutes something like that so you get the whole car um, scene with um, Rick and Shane and a police car and a zombie and all of that so it feels like this ten minutes is supposed to evoke those similarities so you have Daryl Dixon heading to France finding a boat finding this cassette tape about what's to happen leaving his own message and that sort of stuff so overall it was pretty good and I, it's gotten me interested in the show so we'll see how it actually pans out so if you want a little bit of an introduction to the show definitely check it out but if you don't want to be spoiled it'll be coming in September. So next up um, I decided to start the undertaking of rewatching Stargate SG-1 so just doing a binge watch you know watch a, a few episodes a day to kind of minimize the time it takes so you know one episode a day with around 20 episodes a season um right there you've got almost the whole month and then 11 seasons so you're looking at almost a year to watch the whole show um so i'm trying to do you know a couple episodes a day at least so cut it down from about 11 months to maybe half that so around five months so essentially um like a, at least two episodes a day maybe three but just kind of push through it, get it through as fast as I can. So with that being said, I did have a chance to get through season one. Um, aside, from, and so my initial thoughts are, while it is a story building and show building season, aside from Children of the Gods, the season premiere, or the two part season premiere to the show, the episode um, Torment of Tantalus stands out as one of the best episodes of the season just because it sets up the galaxy as a whole as a whole that there's a lot of stargate addresses for that the ghoul don't know about that are not on the abydos cartouche so they can go to a lot of places that potentially the ghoul have not been yet or don't know about so it so not only can't do the team realize that there's that the stargate goes to other places within the network that that ghoul know about but there's a lot more out there that they haven't learned about so um with that being said um overall the season was good i like the ending of it um although i didn't really like that the um season um finale bleeds into the season two premiere but from what my memory of it they did that for all the seasons so um rather than doing a two-part season finale all in one season they do the season finale in one season and then round it out as a starting point in the next season so kind of do that um pay it forward launching of each season 
Um, and then I also forgot how much they introduced in the first season to begin with. So not only do we get Teal'c in the first episode, but we also meet Master Braytac. We meet um, uh, Colonel Mayborn. We have Senator Kinsey and the SG-1 um, android clones, all of which pay off over the course of the show. So Melbourne with the civilian uh, stuff and the secret agency within the military. Uh, Kinsey is continuing in his ongoing efforts to shut down the Stargate and then their story, the, both of their story arcs with their beef with Colonel O'Neill and the two-way um, bickering that's always going back and forth. And then as far as the SG-1 clones, I think they come into play later on. I forget the exact episode or episodes, but they do come into play later on. Um, especially with the guy that goes Comtria all the time and O'Neill's general disdain for him. So, um... Overall, season one in general, like I said, it's a story building and show building season, but they do set up a lot of stuff that they ultimately build uh, later on. So uh, even in season two with um, Thor's chariot and Thor's hammer to introduce the Asgard, which uh, when I finish season two, I'm going to talk about my favorite episode there. But um, those two episodes set up the um, fifth, eighth, fifth race episode. So... Um, like I said, a lot of stuff going on, so even though there's a lot of episodes that are just season-filling episodes, um, there is a lot of content that goes on throughout the show over the 11 seasons, so there's that. Um, so with that being said, and to round out this particular episode, um, I had a chance to play with, um, play or replay um, The Ultimate Doom, um, and I say replay because I did have a chance to play it a while back, but in looking at things to play, I wanted to um, play a Doom mod because I don't think I've really done very many of those outside of uh, what's uh, available in the official app. And so I got to thinking that I would play Voxel Doom, but then I got to thinking that there's another mod that's more that makes the game more modern called Brutal Doom. So what this does is that it updates the um, characters, uh, weapons, um, animations, and the environments to have a more voxel 3D look. It adds more sprites and um, environmental factors, so not necessarily full... Um, I forget what the lighting and shading thing is called, but it adds more lighting effects and shadows and things like that. Um, better barrel explosions, more blood and gore and guts and things like that, so it essentially um, presents it as what if Doom was made a few years later and they were able to, you know, add um, not only X and Y weapons movement, but um, the Y axis, as, or sorry, not just X um, left and right, but Y axis up and down movement, um, more animations and gore and all of that, and then various lighting effects as well. So Brutal Doom covers that very well. So I did play the first three episodes, um, or the first three chapters or whatever, because I wanted to just get an overall idea with the story and see how it goes. So um, it was interesting to see that they added weapons like the flamethrower, uh, submachine gun, uh, dual or split of the plasma gun into both hands, um, and things like that. And then um, a fun little bit of trivia in the game is that uh, once you bring the um, cyber demon's health down enough, you can finish him off with a flamethrower. Um, sadly, that didn't work as well with the spider mastermind, but a nifty little trick I found was that if you stay in the little hallway where the final level starts, you can uh, shoot rockets and BFG shots down that um, hallway at the, spider, uh, at the spider mastermind as he's walking back and forth, so that way you can kill him that way and be generally protected. But overall, if you want a Doom mod that takes original Doom and kind of modernizes it and it makes it more interactive and updates the graphics and things like that, then definitely check out uh, Brutal Doom. You can play it on your desktop from what I understand, which I didn't try, but I did play it on my mobile device using Delta Touch, which incorporates various um, Doom mods. Um, in this case, I used GZ Doom, but also has um, LZ Doom, Chocolate Doom, and a few other ones. So. GZ Doom lets you load the Doom mod and the Brutal Doom mod, or the Doom to the Doom wad and the Doom uh, the Brutal Doom mod, so you can play them on your portal on your mobile device, whether you use on-screen controls or devices like the Razer Kishi. So um, overall, that functioned really well. So 
overall recommendation there. I'll have a link in the show notes to the uh, YouTube playlist, but it's all up on the YouTube channel if you want to watch along. But I do recommend it if you're a fan of Doom, um, Doom mods or anything like that. Um, so to that point, I will be playing another brutal mod um, conversion. Um, at the moment, um, the game itself is Wolfenstein 3D, so you do need to you have uh, the Doom 2 wad, and then there's a brutal Wolfenstein mod that you can use that um, converts um, all the levels and maps to the Wolfenstein 3D levels, and then adds the brutal um, upscale and mod effects to it, so you get more weapons and lighting effects and um, animations and things like that. So look out for that coming soon. But overall. Um, Brutal Doom via the Ultimate Doom is definitely a recommend for me. Um, like I said, you can play it on your mobile device and from what I can tell on your desktop device as well. Um, so that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on social media. All the links are up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews, which also has um, links to the YouTube channel, or you can get to that directly at youtube.com slash patelhang01. And of course, you can support the show and get access early access to the podcast at free version of episodes and all of that by visiting the Patreon at patreon.com slash patelhang01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.